Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat. It's Let It Rip Friday. Hi, I'm Linda Mitchell, 54-year-old elite obstacle racer, award-winning fitness competitor, gym owner, and author. Welcome to the Sisterhood of Sweat podcast, where we will approach the difficult topics of life, interview inspiring guests, and bring empowerment to all. This community is a place where we can be who we are instead of who others want us to be. Let's get started. And now, a word from our sponsors, Essential Formulas. Now more than ever, it is important to have a healthy immune system. Many health professionals agree that probiotics are a leading natural therapy for boosting immune health. Why? Because 70% of your body's immune cells reside in the GI tract. By taking a superior probiotic daily, like Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, with their postbiotic metabolites, you can enhance your overall immune system and immune response. For additional immune support, get RegActive's immune formula to boost your glutathione levels. Since our glutathione levels go down if we feel stressed, maintaining glutathione levels is a key factor for natural defense. For a short-term immune boost, try Dr. O'Hara's Propolis Plus, which provides probiotic and immune support and includes Brazilian green propolis for superior antioxidant support and vitamin E, astaxanthin, and flax oil. Be proactive about your immune health. Ask your retailer today about Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, RegActive Immune Formula, and Dr. O'Hara's Propolis Plus today. I am here today with my good friend, Susie Carter. And today I'm going to be interviewed by Susie on her podcast. And it's amazing. Welcome back to Power Your Perfect Podcast. I'm so excited because I have one of my favorite people on the planet here with me. Linda Mitchell, who is the bomb.com, right? Fitness boutique owner, the sisterhood of sweat brand, surviving domestic violence. She made her mission to empower us as women to take responsibility for our health because, you know, this is our machine. We got to make it work and how to be in the best shape ever, both physically and mentally. Welcome, Linda. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you. I am so excited to be with you. And you're one of the bubbliest people on the planet that I totally love to get sparks going with and just ignite that energy. And I think people feed off of our energy, don't you? Yes, I totally do. So share with our members, like, what is your magic? What's your secret sauce? Because it's more than just fitness, right? When you look at, I believe that you are about holistic success. You're honest, you're transparent. It's just not about having a beautiful body. So share with everybody your magic and your secret sauce. My secret sauce is getting to the why somebody comes into my business. Why are they there and what do they need? I just answer those questions and show up authentically with the, when you say the magic sauce, I think it's just really serving the person right in front of me. Like when you come in, you are my billboard to the world. When I work with you and I change your body and your mindset and everything, it shows up out there. And then people come to me and say, I want what she's having. And they don't even care the price. That's the funny part. They want what they saw happen to you and they come into my business and say, I want that. I want whatever she had. Give me a double. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So we've all had to pivot our business. So share how you pivoted right through this whole global pandemic. And, you know, I think there's still people waiting and your industry took a huge hit. So talk about how you reinvented and pivoted your business inside of the way we're all doing business now. Basically, what I did, I think we all kind of went a little bit into survival mode. And also, I wanted to thrive, not just survive. But the very first thing I did, instead of ruling out my ideas, which, you know, when you guys were home and we were like on lockdown and you're wondering, everything's canceled. I can't even show up at work. I mean, in the gym world, our gym was closed. Like you were not allowed to be open. So you're asking yourself, was this an opportune time for me to be in business? You're feeling it. You're feeling it. But what I I did was I realized and I recognized that all I really needed to do was show up for my clients in a different way 
online. So I taught workouts on Zoom. I personal trained on Zoom. I even had like a happy hour with like Elaine LaLane, which her husband was Jack LaLane, the godfather of fitness. So we used to show up in the orange jumpsuits, you know, she's famous. And I got people that I couldn't get at my grand opening to show up for all of my members. So they got to meet them online, live in a happy hour. And I gave away like shirts to people that I thought like a tank top, like a fitness top that I thought kind of pegged them, like that would speak to them. And I just found ways of making my community feel together. And we would be on the Zoom and not like your regular Zoom. It's probably like Susie's Zoom, but not like your regular fitness Zoom where you can't talk the instructor and you're following and you don't even know, are you doing it right? I left everyone's mics on so that we could all converse back and forth. And like, if I needed to say, hey, you need to get a little lower on that burpee. No. (laughs) 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 Or you need to put your knees over your toes or whatever. I could give them correction, but what they needed more than correction was connection. And that was the biggest thing I learned was if you can stay serving your community and connected to them. And they know that you are like during a pandemic, where else are they going to go? They really need, they really need that connection. And I got more appreciation during that time than I ever did in the gym. And people were like, so into it. Yeah. Well, now you're not just confined in your geographical area, right? It took the fitness industry by storm. The people that moved and pivoted and said, I'm just going to make this happen because I still have clients that, you know, their heads are in the sand. They're not clients, they're people that their heads are in the sand going, when is it going to get back to normal? This is the new norm. Come on, we got to snap out of it. Like we don't know what's going to happen. And as a business owner, we have to pivot, right? We have to be able to shift that. So what's one of your biggest pivotal moments in your career outside of this one? Because this has been huge for all of us. (laughs) One of my biggest pivotal moments. Oh my God, there's so many, Susie. (laughs) I think it's probably when I was in my little studio, which I call my starter studio. And I don't know, are are we allowed to mention God on this podcast? You can mention whoever you want, girl. (laughs) He's a big part of my story. I was praying and I was like, God, I know I've been playing small. And I'm ready to start playing big. And I knew that I hadn't been playing full out like I do and have in the past. And so my prayer got answered. And the next week, my landlord increased my rent triple. And (laughs) I was in there. If that's not going to make you play bigger. (laughs) Yeah, it did. It actually did. And I'll explain why. I was like, oh my gosh, like, and then the landlord, he came in and he was just kind of running roughshod over people. And I knew right away, I got to tell you within five minutes, no, (laughs) this is not the end. This is not happening. And I remember I turned to my husband and I said, I guess we're going to have to go big or we're going to have to go home. Yeah. So what did we do? We went big. And during the pandemic, we went bigger. And, you know, I always have been one of these people because of the, I guess, the domestic violence and other things. I probably still had a little bit of that. I didn't have, I had a lack of confidence is probably a good word for it. A lack of confidence. And I didn't realize what I could do. And I think I was always afraid every time. I don't know if you guys can relate, but being afraid to take a leap or worrying about all the things. What if this, what if that, can I do it? I don't know that I knew though I was speaking it, which I believe in the power of your words, I was speaking it all into existence. Like when I went into the the new studio that we first jumped from the small studio, I was speaking it and I was saying, we're going to open up this other section. And it's, I was speaking all the things it was going to be for a year. And it literally happened just that way. I think I believed it, but I don't know I fully believed it. I didn't realize what I could actually do. I didn't realize the strength in my vision, like the, and the power of taking the leap and just having the faith. 
that's the risk it all, get it all, right? And some people are just doing the double dutch. I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out. And you can't be in, out. You're either in or you're not in. And so I think that is when you look at, you speak a lot about visualization and writing it down and speaking out your mm-hmm. dream. So in that process, did you do that whole process, right? You have it in your book, you have it in your classes. So share a little bit about that, like how you manifest what you manifest because you're so crystal clear on paper first, right? And then in your mind. So share a little bit about that. Right, I am huge on doing that. And I've actually done that for years. And and it's an actual fact that you're 50% more likely to achieve whatever you write down on paper because you're seeing it you're writing it out, you're seeing it in your mind's eye. And then when you speak it out, who's the person that hears that? It's you. You're listening to your own words. So if I'm constantly saying a negative forecast, that's probably what's going to end up happening. It's that power behind your words and your belief and just speaking it out into the universe. And also, I really believe, and when you take a leap, that the net appears. I really believe in that. Like when I speak it out into the universe and I move forward with a decision, the universe just like opens up to what I decided. And I can't even believe, I do believe, but what I'm doing now And where I started from when I was afraid and I was alone and I had two small children and I am being beat up basically. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never worked. I'm like young. I'm like in my, you know, 21. I'm like, what am I going to do? I've never worked full time. I had two small children. I'm worried about my future. And I thought, well, I want to do fitness. I love fitness. And it wasn't even a career. It wasn't even a career. And I just made that decision. And one step led to the next, to the next, to the next. And has it been a career? Yes. It's been a way of life and it's changed so many people's lives. So back to what you asked me about, I literally have a process. I write down my goals and my dreams what the five most important are. I may write 25 out. I pick the five that I can't live without accomplishing that are the most important to me so that I understand what my why is when I actually go to doing a vision board. And then I put the vision board, I put the whole thing up and I say what I want exactly. You got to be specific. (laughs) You don't want to end up on the Steve Harvey show on the camera. Like I said, I wanted to be on the show. I was on, I was on almost every episode, crying, laughing, but not as a guest. I should have spoke it out in the universe and said, I want to be on the Steve Harvey show as a guest, as a speaker with my book front and center. So you got to be specific about what it is you want. And then I like to do the perfect day scenario where you write out on a clock all your dreams, everything you want. And the first time you don't dream big enough, you've got to write that out two to three times because you're probably writing down some of the things you're already doing. But literally, I was at this mastermind with Isaiah Hankel, and I wrote things out by that third time that were really out there. And I was embarrassed. I didn't want people looking at that list. And he called me up front and I had to read it. And I am like, oh my gosh, I was like, oh, that's my alter ego speaking. And he turned to me and he said, do you guys see her doing the things on this list? I see her doing the things on this list. And then the biggest thing was when he turned to me, looked me in the eyes and said, you deserve to do the things on this list. You know, within a month, I did at least four of those things. And what I was, were the crazy things? Like, what was the craziest one that you were like? <laughs> the crazy one that I was again. embarrassed. <laughs> I wanted to skinny dip. I wanted to skinny dip at midnight in the ocean with my husband. And That's awesome. yeah, <laughs> I was embarrassed to be called out front, you know, and oh, I want to skinny dip in the ocean. And then it was to swim with the dolphins. Mm-hmm. I did that. That made me cry, actually. 
Um, it made me cry, but out of fear. I just want to say that out loud. Oh, oh, I cried because I felt such a connection. They're such sweet animals. It just made me cry. And they're also, sweet 700 pound animals, girl. <laughs> what? They're sweet 700 pound <laughs> animals. <laughs> I was just so into the experience and the fact that my husband did it for my birthday and he was living out my dreams with me made me cry because there have been times in the past where I wasn't sure, like, can we live out the dreams I'm having because right. he wasn't always on board. But after I went to that speak and write with you and Lisa Nichols, it was worth the price of a mission just because my husband was there. And in the audience, he said, what is your why? Because you were telling us we needed to tell each other our why. So I told him my why and he broke down and I cried. And that's the first time he got my why. And do you know, he got behind my why. And as a team, we have built a strong business. And yeah. if your husband doesn't understand your why, it's harder for him to get behind it. I love that. I love that you drag him, right? So drag him kicking and screaming to that event. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and you can't give up. I think we put our relationships in a box. We put our people in a box to go, they're never going to get it. Well, whatever you say is true. So if they're never going to get it, they're never going to get it. But I always hold the possibility of, how else do I communicate this? How else do I share? How else do I have them get it? I think we're in such a Google download world and people aren't Google download. We all have our processes, right? right. And when you're reinventing yourself from who you were to who you are, some people have a hard time with that, right? And I think we yes. just come back from events like that and change the rules. We don't go, hold, hold on. I'm going to really change. Here's what I'm looking for. We just start changing, which freaks them out. <laughs> And did, yeah, and I be with you. It's so true. And I wasn't really explaining, like he didn't understand why I was getting on Instagram talking to all these people. Why are you doing that? Or why I was doing competing and fitness shows or speaking at events or any of that. It was such a bizarre twist of the person I was before that. He just didn't understand the why, but once he understood the why, that changed everything. And really, I think a lot of the times we're not really enlisting people in our dreams and we're just expecting them to jump on board. Right. Just get it. <laughs> yeah. Just get it. And then we think right. they're holding me back. We all have our different processes. What's your process when you goal set and you're dream building? What's your process that you do? We were talking about that perfect day. I meant to mention that we've almost checked everything thing off the list, which it's, you know, all the hours to 12 midnight. And the biggest thing is we went looking for our dream beach house in Hilton Head just like a couple weeks ago. And it's going to be a reality. I don't think if I hadn't have showed my husband all these, I actually have a podcast with all of the things that I do. It's like at the beginning of the year on the Sisterhood of Sweat, but like he did the whole thing with me. I started getting him to do these things, writing down your goals, picking out the top five, the vision board, and then the perfect day scenario. And once he did all those things, he achieved all his goals. And so the funny thing is, is when we first got together, he didn't know if we should get married yet because he was afraid it might holding back from accomplishing his dreams of being a millionaire. And I didn't know if I wanted to get married yet because of the bad time I had before. And I wanted to do all these dreams, but we've accomplished, I wanted a studio. We've accomplished all those dreams, every single one together. And we became multi-millionaires during COVID of all things, right. of all things. That's crazy, right? That's, That's crazy. delicious. <laughs> it's crazy. It. Yeah. So and getting used to that is kind of weird. If you have to look back at your life, Linda, what's one thing you want to be remembered for? The, the impact that you've made in the world? Because you've done so many amazing things and you're such a generous spirit. What's the one thing that what? Repeat that. that you want to be remembered for. I wanted to give women a voice and help them really recognize that they deserve to have a voice, to hold space, to be heard, to be seen and to matter. And I love that I just got chills, right? That you do it with your vocation. I think people go, oh, I can't live my purpose and my passion. Well, you're doing it through fitness, but that's what gets them in the door and then the transformation occurs. So 
I think when you have that why, when you have that big calling, when you are that committed, use whatever the vocation God gave you, right? I believe that our gift from God is our life. Our gift back to God is what do we do with our life? How do I make a difference for my tribe, my community, my children, right? My family. It's not for yours to keep. At first, you can doubt your ideas because sometimes the ideas we have, somebody else talks them down or we talk them down to ourselves. But like your ideas and they're unique and they're original and nobody is going to deliver them like you do. And there is a space and a place for your dreams to become a reality. And once you start taking the steps, like I know Martin Luther King says, you can't see the whole staircase, just take the first step. It's such a reality because once you start taking those steps, then more of the steps appear. When I look back connecting all the dots, like Steve Jobs says, I would have never realized how all of the dots connected to take me where I am right now. And all of the dreams and the passions and the heartfelt thoughts that I had when I was going through abuse and I wanted to have a place for women where they could have that safe place to fall. It all came to be, but it came through my passion of fitness. Now it could have been my passion of business like Susie's or my passion. I love to bake. I'm making a cookbook right now, but it could have been through that, right? It doesn't have to be one vehicle to get your message out there. Of course, you got to have a vehicle, but like it could be like, maybe you're a great accountant. You could straighten me out. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I think that's a call for help, y'all. That's a call for help. (laughs) I need, I hate doing books. (laughs) I like making the money. I like my bookkeeper managing the book. I like making the money and I like being with the people, but I hate the book work. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's okay we hire people to do that so yeah I want people to hear Linda because I think what we don't do often is we don't share our badass list like you've done some amazing things and I want people to hear not judge but don't judge a book by its cover so what are like if you look at here's Linda Mitchell and here's her badass list what is that like my all badass the ass list I've won five Spartan races after the age of 55 what's a spartan race so uh, let's lay people know what that means the beast the super the sprint a beast is basically running well 14 miles and then you also are doing crazy obstacles i mean crazy that was my first time and i won in my age category that's you didn't really know what i was doing so international speaker, best-selling author. Yes. I've written two books and one was just to help my clients and that actually won in an award. So like, I mean, it was not a book I meant to write. It's a book I wrote out of the needs of my clients to mm. show them the roadmap. So it's like an eight week course too. So I developed a course out of the book and those together, I've had people getting in the best shape of their lives, losing weight, and I'm not even present. It's like your calling card, your roadmap, your gift to the world really is doing that type of thing. And it also, it's like giving somebody that map. They need the map. Then they have confidence in you. If you can take them and show them where you're going and that you can be the person to take them there, of course, they're going to sign up with you. Right. A woman that has survived domestic violence and is a happy woman, happy, happy woman, right? (laughs) Right. A a seven, eight figure business. Anything else you want to add to that? Um, Let's see. I I guess. Listen, because I know my girl. Okay. Titles of Miss Fitness USA. I've won eight titles in some championships that were national. I've been in Fitness America, Fitness Universe at the age of in my 50s, all the way up to 57, when I tore my hamstring, I placed in the top five, like eight times two. And so like, and then there's all those times you play second or third, but I'm just saying like that to me, I feel proud of that because when I started, I was freaking almost last place, probably. (laughs) 
<laughs> I didn't know what I was doing and I was doing fitness. I never did tumbling or dancing. I taught myself how to do it all. And I'm proud of it because it really helped bring me up and build me up. And it gave me confidence in myself as a woman because I had that so torn down in that first marriage. But I've also, one of my greatest accomplishments are my three beautiful children who have all graduated college. They're all living their lives and they're so talented. And then I've been married for 27 years to my second husband who is supporting my dreams. I don't cry in my bed every night. That is a huge badass list, right? And I love, love, love over 50. Look how much you've accomplished over 50 because a lot of people go, I'm done, right? And 50, I think now in our generation is so different than our grandparents or even our moms of what's possible. You know, just blowing it open. I wanted to meet a powerful woman that walks her talk, that is living her dream, living her passion. And you can find love, right? You can recover from those things that happen to us. Although they're tragic, they teach us how to be taught, be treated in another relationship, right? Our paths are very similar. Like a, what I would not stand for, have my children stand for because I've experienced that. We just know what we know. And so making better choices. So you have a gift for us, which I love. We love prizes. We love gifts. And so you're giving us that online eight week challenge that you just shared. You want to share a little bit about what we can expect from that? It is a course online and it's generally costs. <laughs> But you guys are getting it for free because of Susie. And it has workouts with PDFs. So you're able to do the workout, see the video, or if you just want the workout, you could just pull it up on your phone and play your own music and do the workout. And also it has nutrition that changes every two weeks. The average weight loss is 25 pounds wow. by the time your eight weeks is up. And even somebody that I had that only did four weeks, and this could be anybody, they could be eating Grippos and chocolate. They still lost 15 pounds and they had only done four weeks, at, right? So right. if you do it full out, I've had people losing up to 45 pounds wow. in the eight weeks following it to the letter. And it is spelled out to the letter. You won't wonder how to do what why you should do it. It tells you why you should do it, how to do it. It puts the list of what you're supposed to eat, how much. And then you have like a journal that you fill out and you're like filling it out every two weeks. It's all laid out for you with menus, recipes, grocery lists. It's all right there. And then all these videos for you to be able to have access to learn. It's pretty substantial. Yeah, Definitely make that's sure a great you take bonus. a hold of it. That is a great bonus and a great gift, right? I told you I'm bringing you my badass friends that are giving badass prizes. So Linda, thank you. Thank you for who you are in the world. Thank you for being such a leader for women and being a stand for us to have a life that's unrecognizable and being really the Pied Piper for that, right? You're, you always are the Pied Piper for possibility and what's possible in our life. So thank you so much. I appreciate you and I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Thank you, Susie, for having me. And thanks everybody out there for listening. And I hope that all of our listeners have enjoyed this podcast. And if you guys have really enjoyed this, please review us in iTunes and also share this episode with your friends and your loved ones. Thanks again for listening to the Sisterhood of Sweat. 